Ah, Sunday nights. Let's get the cozy background with the fireplace going, some warm jazz music. You know, recently these videos have been even better because school's back in session, so there's always less of us here. We're the, we're the true night owls, you and I. Look at that bullshit to fuck up on my screen. Friends, we have a situation. I am at war. War with who? War with myself. It would seem my old man eyes have betrayed me. Or actually, they're, they're not old man eyes. I actually have very good vision. Some would say the best. It's just, you know, recently they've been worn down by a newly installed bidet someone in this house got on the toilet. But why am I saying this? It's because a lot of you have dutifully pointed out that I erroneously stated this was the Pyro Sovereign Shia Waddle. The Pyro Sovereign went berserk, attacking everything. One mural. One, one mural depicts the Pyro Sovereign, a, a black dragon, attacking a sacred white tree. At first, I was confused by these claims, I will admit, befuddled even. I thought to myself, I swear the other mural of Shibalanke rising out of this dead dragon's heart. Oh! Here it is, right here, that's Shibalanke, and there's the dragon he killed, Shia Kawaddle. So I thought to myself, how could it be everyone is so sure that this dragon isn't Shia Kawaddle? Well, turns out if you're not a dumb fuck and you have normal human eyes, you'll immediately notice these aren't the same dragon. They're not even the same color or nothing. <laughs> Uh, you know, recently we've been we've been getting a lot of praise for the 2.5 Ron Mei Ting Yun video last pass that did a you know a fairly decent job at predicting what would happen in 2.6, and now we are getting taken down a few notches. That's what I like about this this dynamic. I've said it before, I'll say it again. This channel is nothing more than the motherfucking forum Romana bitch. But to be fair to me, to be fair to me, the way this shit is presented in the quest, it's a fast sequence. The pictures that are side by side, they both just talk about destruction. You know, for the black dragon, it says the pitch black flame scorched the land. And then for the other one with Shibalanke and Shia Kawadal, it says, You see the entire city's annihilation, the buildings collapse, the ash white model is squeezed in midair. Is there a turn to powder? I don't know, I'm just saying, it's it's trick. It's easy to get tricked up on this. I, I wouldn't blame Dawit for getting tricked up on this. Oh, that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. And before you niggas go calling me colorblind, if you're gonna call me colorblind, you're gonna call these devs colorblind. Cause nigga, these, these are not pitch black flames, bro. These are just flame flames, nigga. Ah, strike a match right now for the fucking convenience store blacking in these flames. But now the all important question. If this black dragon isn't Shia Kawadal, then who is it? Well, let's keep some things in mind. This dragon is black. Its skin is black. It spits black flames. Uh, the fucking allegedly, I should add, because it isn't evident here. <laughs> Call me colorblind. And it's said to have wings from beyond this world. We know a dragon that fits all these requirements. This black dragon has one more feature of note. My friends, look at its head. Doesn't this resemble a crown fit for a king? A dragon king? My friends, this black dragon, in all likelihood, this could very well be our first look at that bastard crackhead dragon king label souped up on, souped up on forbidden knowledge. I've long held the opinion and stood firm in it that Nibelung was the second who came, and I'm not gonna rehash the whole theory here, I've done it quite a few times already, namely in this video, someone consider this to be the creme de la creme of this channel, so if you do want to understand why I believe Nibelung is the second descender, take a gander, it'll answer your questions, maybe. <laughs> A basic framework for the theory, however, is that Nibelung and the Sovereigns lost to the Heavenly Principles in the First War. Nibelung pieced out to find crack for dragon forbidden knowledge and later returned to Tevat with said forbidden knowledge to lead a war of vengeance against the one who took everything from him. The one who, despite Nibelung and the Sovereigns having every advantage in the book, numbers, home court, time, took everything from him, the one who despites Nibelung calling timeout, leaving and returning with crackhead strength, took everything from him because the one Nibelung tried to exact vengeance upon was the creator, the winged one, the sovereign of sovereigns. The 
primordial one, the progenitor god, hail from beyond the stars! The Dragon King acquired the power of darkness from outside of this world and led us in a fight against the order established by the Outsiders. D dragon King? An unimaginable war took place into that, causing destruction on an unprecedented scale. The world itself was on the verge of collapse. I mean, power of darkness, this is a black dragon. Furthermore, the Obsidian Codex set gives us an interesting bit of information on this war, writing, quote, In the days when the dispossessed divine envoy fell into realms devoid of light, and when the ruler newly returned destroyed the blasphemous citadel, many stories transpired that were never recorded or eulogized in any human history. In the kingdom of bishops lucky enough to survive when heaven and earth collapsed, Isolated by a vast sea of red soil where their kin could only scrape by impoverished in the expanse of the desolate sea, they enjoyed freedom by the grace of the one who ruled over flames, and yet the wisdom of fire had already been seized by the tide of n n do my eyes deceive me? Does that say fuculent? Fuculent darkness! Only its grey corpse shambled upon. I mean, ruler newly returned, that's gotta be Nibelung. But here's the odd thing, is that in this set, it's stated that Shilko Waddle didn't die in that great war of vengeance. No, he would continue to live in rule Notlon. And we know this because when Waxel Ubakan reached the people of Notlon, he would tell them, quote, But from your heir shall come the savior of two worlds. He shall be brutal as the lions and scorpions, but cunning as a wild fox. One day he shall slay the overlord of fire and ascend to the oldest of thrones. Praise be unto the ruler of two worlds. Now, while at first it seems odd a dragon would be allowed to rule a nation after Nibelung died, let's keep some things in mind. Following this war, the heavenly hierarchy would be in disarray. Quote, severely wounded in the great war of vengeance, the usurper had their functions ruined and could no longer use their absolute authority to suppress the original order of this world. To continue to subdue and control the resentments and loathing of the world, the usurper and one who came after created the Gnosis together. So, with the primordial one, focused on pumping out the Gnosis, it would seem like there would have been a gap that would have allowed for a dragon to oppress people who themselves are also in disarray. Because remember, before the war with the second who came, the people lived in a single unified nation, a utopia. Then this war happened, just sort of fucked everything up, and because the divine envoys were no more so they couldn't guide the people, the people started living like they were in the fucking Neo-Paleolithic times, and just had tribes and fucking spears. So yeah, no shit, the dragons just sort of bitched them, that makes sense. The only thing that makes this whole situation odd is that it's the Pyro Sovereign. This honestly leads me to believe that maybe Shioko Waddle wasn't the Pyro Sovereign. Only for the fact that it's so odd to me a Sovereign would still be around and be ruling a nation while the heavens controlled to that. I mean, yeah, Pep was around, but she wasn't doing anything. She was just in the fucking the desert, just, oh, we're an adult, right? So you're telling me this dude, Shiakawaddle, survived the original war, then the Great War of Vengeance, and could still rule? This guy's a fucking cockroach! Anyways, 07 for this envoy who died trying to save parts of Ermansoul from this mega Nibelung's Duncan janked ass breath. A real one, really. Anyway, if I had to summarize a brief timeline of what we'd seen based on the information we have, uh... Sovereigns owned to that originally. The heavenly principles came and kicked their shit in. Some sovereigns died. Some went to the depths. Uh, they were just vanquished, it says. Nibelung left. The heavenly principles terraformed the earth, set up the utopia. Things were great for a time. Then that crackhead Nibelung came back with forbidden knowledge and led the sovereigns again in a war versus the heavenly principles. And in the process, smashed everything, but in the end, still died like a little bitch. Some bishops then seek refuge with Shia Waddle, who had his own little plot of land called Notlon. The Sage of the Missing Flame would steal the flame around this time. Some time would pass again. Shibalanke would show up and kill Shia Kawadal. Well, I can't wait to see the, uh... It's a forum, guys. It's a fucking forum. <laughs>